Hey friends, it is me, Lana. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back. Remember back, like, a few years ago, maybe during or before COVID, when, um, people would do, like, get ready with me sprints, or, like, little get ready with me lives. I figured it would be fun to do that in video form, where I'm, like, getting ready to either maybe film or go out, or honestly, I just bought some makeup, so I kind of want to test it out anyways. So I thought it would be fun to do a little, um, get ready with me video, and just talk about books as we go. I think I'm mainly gonna actually talk about House of Flame and Shadow, um, because I had a vlog that, like, was supposed to go up, and it was, had all my thoughts and my feelings as I read the book, and then, like, the, when I tried to put the clips in my thing and tried to, um, uh, edit it and then, uh, up, or not upload it, but, like, once you're done editing, like, condense it into a full video, I can't render it, I guess, um, the clips were, like, contaminated, or whatever and so it didn't work and so I didn't have any other clips <laughs> so I just kind of trashed it but I still want to like talk about it and uh like just discuss my thoughts and feelings and everything that was going on during the book and um I figured since it's like March when I'm filming this that the book has been out long enough that I can like even go into more detail than I really did in the vlog. Uh, and just so you guys know, this is a spoiler warning. I will be talking about spoilers and just my thoughts about certain spoilers in this book. So if you are or have not read, if you don't want to hear spoilers, please do not watch this video. Um, pardon my, I like just put my contacts in so that's why my eyes are really wonky because um, one of my contacts was like hurting. So I had to like change it out for a new one and stuff. So that's why it's a little it's a little messy right now. But yeah, so I just I just thought it would be a fun fun time. Uh, like I said, I bought a bunch of makeup. So not a bunch, but I bought a few things. So I'm gonna be testing them out too. So if they look ugly, pretend you didn't see it. Okay. So starting um, out, so I really liked, and I want to start with my primer. So I really liked the first house of. Um, Earth and, what is it? Why am I looking like I have the book in front of me? Um, I liked the first Crescent City book a lot, actually. I was really, really nervous to read it. And so, um, because at that point when I read it, the only book of Sarah J. Moss's I had read officially was Throne of Glass. And not even, not even the series, like just the first Throne of Glass. So I wasn't sure and like that one I initially gave I think three or four stars to and I think even when I reread it I gave it the same rating because it was just like okay it wasn't like like all that like I like it wasn't what I was I was expecting it to be better than what it was for me because she's so hyped and so the fact that it wasn't I just like took a pause and I was like she's not something I'm like dying to dive into as an author so and that's like okay so I'm just making sure this thing is good um so when Crescent City came out and everybody was like raving about it um I was not in a hurry to get to it I was actually very nervous because that was a big book I think that was like one of her biggest books she had published so far um so I just again I wasn't sure if I was interested I I had I think I bought a copy and I still like was like I don't know when I'm gonna get, this, get to this so that was funny to me and um so I think it wasn't until like two years after it had come out that I decided to finally read it and that's just because my friends were putting reading it and I think it was because the second book was coming out that year. It was the same year the second book was coming out. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll finally read it now that everybody else I know is reading it. And uh, I, like, remember, because I, I wasn't really interested in Akatar at all. So, oh, it's not bad. Um, what am I doing this first? Oh, where do this? And then, sorry, I usually do my eyes first and... I didn't do that. Um, yeah, so, I, 
everybody was like obsessed with the Akatar, not really Throne of Glass. So I also wasn't really interested in that because I don't really like, it's something I've discovered, I don't really like fairies like that. Like, if I like a fairy book, it has to be very particular. Um, so like I wasn't a big Holly Black, I'm not a big Holly Black fan. Because I read some of her previous stuff when I was younger and I didn't really like it. I think I read Tight, I think that's the one I read and I didn't really enjoy it. And then... Um, I eventually did give Cool Prince a chance, and again, it was just okay. Um, so again, wasn't really interested in Akatar, which I am actually trying to work through the series now, because I want to know all the things now that she's tying all her worlds together, essentially, uh, eventually. Um, but, so, again, hesitant to read Crescent City, wasn't sure I was going to like it. I read it. I really liked it. I loved, um, not so much Hunt. I mean, I guess I liked their relationship in the beginning, actually. Um, I liked that, like, they were both kind of in really crappy situations, and they had to work together to get themselves out of these situations. So, yes, I liked it. Oh, what should do this song, actually? Um, and then there were, like, certain aspects of the story that I liked. Like, I liked the adventuring. I liked all the people we met. Um, I essentially liked the Scooby Gang, which is who I refer to as <laughs> all the extra background characters. Like, all the friends of Rune and Bryce and Hunt. Um, so, yeah, I, like, enjoyed it a lot. Rip La Habla. La, La Habla. Am I saying her name right? Well, rip to her though, because I feel like she was unnecessarily uh, gotten rid of. But, um, yeah, so I liked the first one. So I got to the second one, um, and I did not like that one. Because I felt like she just did a lot, and it was slightly unnecessary what she did. Like, there were just... So, like, with the second book, you're starting out, and you're starting out with this little girl running away... And so you, like, go in and you're thinking, I need a mirror. And you think that, like, she's going to be important later. And, like, she kind of is, but not in the way that you think. And I feel like it was kind of a waste of a character. Like, I felt like she just, like... I feel like in the second book you could see where Sarah J Moss was just using characters as plot devices. And then, like, getting rid of them. And it was kind of annoying because I was like, well, why are you introducing these characters that people could potentially get invested in? And then they're like dead they don't matter so that was annoying me a lot because the little girl ended up not mattering really like she kind of mattered but not really and then um there's the whole plot with like the the cousin that was like unnecessary again like he ended up not mattering um and then the the like again just there were too many plot points in that book that i felt like you didn't really know where it was going and it was too chaotic and there were too many characters like this is where you got to start killing your people off, sis, if you're going to start killing people off. And I feel like she was kind of killing people off, but not enough people. And so, again, we just had too many things going on. So, so when we, like, got to the end, I was like, wow, like, we still have a lot of people here. Nobody's died. I mean, some people have died, but not a lot, of, not enough. And, um... Like, we got to the ending, and it was like, oh, she's bringing Akatar into this. So that's the only reason why I was going to continue, was because I was like, okay, she kind of ended this on an interesting note, despite the fact that this book was so chaotic. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, actually, I'm just going to do that. Since it's, since it's here, and you're Um... So, yeah, so the second book was chaotic. The ending was, like, enough to make me want to read the third one. So, but I was nervous because I wasn't sure what she was going to do. Because where we end on the second one, as if you've read it, it's, like, chaos again. Like, everybody's scattered. People are in places they probably shouldn't be. People are in places that you don't want them to be in. Getting into my thoughts of the, the third one, I'm sorry. It's taking, it's taking so long. But, like I was saying, so we get to the third one. So I really wasn't sure what to expect when starting the book. And I felt like... Um, 
I felt like Sarah needed to do something really like drastic not drastic but like intentional um for me to continue on in the series because I was like I feel like if it doesn't if it's not better than the second book then it's a waste of my time so I kind of felt going into this book that it was going to be like an end-all be-all thing like if she doesn't do well with this I'm probably not gonna like continue on reading if she does then I'll like keep my my mind open to the rest of the books or whatever or whatever was coming out also we went into this thinking this was the last book so I was like this is the last book so I'm not really gonna be wasting like too much time or anything like that um plot twist it's not the last book but so okay going in so we start the we start the book and Bryce is in I want to say Pan Am that's not it's <laughs> not where they are um wherever the Akatar world is taking place Prim I think that's what it's called. I, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. I've only read one book in that series. Um, but she is in that world and you meet Nesta. So in in this instance, I, was a, I wasn't I was lost, but me and Monet did get on Zoom as we were reading this book. And I had her explain certain things to me in regards to Akatar because I'm not that far in. So I haven't gotten Nesta's story. I've only like met her briefly in the first book because I'm still in Feyre's story of the series. So I had her, she like explained a few things to me and then I explained a few things to her about like Throne of Glass because I feel like there were some elements in there that were tying Throne of Glass and its history as well. So we get there, so Bryce is in this world with Nesta, Hunt, um, Rune, and then Danica's little hellhound is in um, the dungeons of the of Midgard. Uh, also, Danica's surprise little hellhound was a lot. Um, I'm surprised he made it as far as he did. And the Scooby gang are back in Midgard too, but they're like kind of trying to figure out where Bryce is, how to get the rest of them out of the dungeons. Well, actually, they're still trying to figure out where everybody is because nobody knows where, nobody's on, nobody knows nothing. Nobody knows nothing about nothing. Like, everybody's stuck. They don't know where anybody is. They don't know who to contact. They don't know who's on their side, who's not on their side. They're, like, scrambling, basically. Um, so, when we get to, like, we start off with Bryce. So, when she's in Midgard, she runs into, like, Nesta, um, Asriel, who I haven't met yet, and Resand, who I have met briefly. Um... And what's her name? It, ooh, that one lady in I haven't met her yet either, but uh, Monet was telling me a lot about her. Um, she, it starts with an A. She's like, but she's not part of the Fae. She's something else. I can't think of her name right now. So her too. She's there. So when they get there, they're like, who is this lady that just came out of this portal, came out of nowhere? And then when Bryce starts talking, the lady that's like, like, old, not fey. She's like, oh, you're speaking old fey. So that confuses everybody more because it's like, well, how do you know the language of our old people? Blah blah blah. And Bryce is confused. They're confused. Throw in that meme or that gif or that like TikTok image of like Fez from Euphoria being like, you're confused. I'm confused, dude. That's the whole situation. Everybody's just confused. And so I'm even confused because I don't know what's going on. So then, um, basically they leave Bryce in the dungeon and Bryce manages to escape. Though I think it's kind of pur purposeful that she escapes, like, to be honest. And Nesta ends up following her. They go into this tunnel. And, um, that nobody knew existed, first of all, in this world. So that's, like, interesting. And then the other thing is that as they're going, oh, and Azriel's there too, I'm sorry. He doesn't really reveal himself until after through, so I totally forgot that he was there. So, um, the most important stuff for, like, the good trick of the book that's happening is with Bryce. Everybody else is still stuck. Like, uh, the Scooby Gang's still stuck trying to figure out where everybody is. Bright, uh, Hunt. Resan, not Resan, Hunt, Rune, they're all still in the dungeons. Chill. Like, well, not chilling. 
things are happening with them, like they're being tortured. But they're not getting out anytime soon. So it's really just Hunt, it's really just Bryce at this point, who's like doing the most. Um, so her and Nesta continue down this tunnel, and then, um, which again, like the whole time they were doing this, I kept thinking of like the secret tunnel, tunnel song from Avatar, like it was kind of funny. Um, but as they're doing that, they actually come across this like old castle almost. And so there, they actually learn the history of Midgard and Prim, if that's the name of the actor world. Um, they, like, they learn the actual history that, like, the people from Prim actually, like, crossed over into Midgard because the Asteri tricked them. So, like, the Asteri used to exist on Prim. I keep saying this name. I hope this is right. If I, if it's not, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but they can't, they, like used to exist on the Akatar world and then the Akatar people managed to fight them off and kick them out and so that's what like Bryce was trying to figure out this whole time like how did you guys get rid of them and so when they get there they realize that Midgard was created by the Asteri like and they ended up tricking like a bunch of be like fey partially from the Akatar world, partially from the Thunderglass world, to like, and then some other beings to cross over into this world that it only, I think it just, it was just humans that existed there. And so they came in and like invaded and took over and everything like that. But nobody remembers this because they altered their memories. And so, um, So, when we get to this revelation, Bryce is like, damn, like, okay, well, now we gotta figure out, like, how to kill them, because y'all didn't kill them, you just, you just, like, got rid of them, essentially, and it's also slightly y'all's fault that, like, this is happening in Midgard, <laughs> kind of, because, uh, they had a queen who was greedy, and she wanted more land, and so she thought she could trick the Asteri into, uh, giving this to her and then she realized that Asteri tricked her and she was their puppet essentially so um fast forward the lady so the lady is like the lady that's talking is like this the daughter of the queen that originally went over to Midgard so her and her sister got split up she ended up cross escaping and crossing back over into Akatar world and her sister ended up staying in Midgard and that's who's I think that's who Bryce is bloodline is through and so um this other lady is i think who resands bloodline is through so she actually recorded herself giving this history and then she was like oh my descendants will know well somebody in the bloodline messed up because the story was not passed down resand has no idea so they're in this castle and a lady literally specifically says that i've trapped the most heinous like the most baddest of evil in this castle, or a baddest of beasts, evil, whatever, in this castle. Everybody just glossed over that part. I was still picking it up, because I was like, what is in this castle? Because if it's the most hideous things that nobody has seen in a thousand years, how is it still here? So, then, before I get fur further into the story, Monet told me, so that lady that's not a fae, I can't remember, Amrin, Amrin, her name is Amrin, she came from that castle like there's a prison they find out there's a prison underneath the castle and that's where Amber came from did nobody question why this lady was down there like I was asking Monet I was like none of y'all questioned why this lady was in this prison and she was like she just said she got stuck there and I was like this lady's not a fake she's not one of you and she just comes out this cat this prison and you're just like okay cool she can hang with the crew she's in she's in with with the bet with the with the posse, like, that doesn't make sense. And when that lady said, like, oh, this is the be the biggest, baddest stuff down here, why was she down there in the first place? How did she get down there? And how did she survive down there? So now I'm curious about this Amber chick. Um, I need to know why she was down there. I need to know why nobody thought to question why she was down there. Like, I don't, I don't even think, like, it crossed anybody's mind to question it, but I'm questioning it. Why was she down there? How did she survive? And, like why is nobody like concerned about the fact that she was 
now she now she's down there. Like she's she's up up on the surface level with y'all, and she was down there with the evil of the evil of your world. So like, figure that out, please and thank you for me. So I'm hoping that becomes a subject in a, a book later on because that that's some interesting stuff. So what was it? Like? Oh yeah. So after they get that revelation, the ground collapses, and they fall into the prison essentially. And guess what's down there? The old Asteri that used to rule the world. Apparently, they didn't kill that bitch. She is sleeping in a glass coffin at the bottom of the prison. And so it just so happens that uh, the ground collapses. Because I think Bryce and Nesta and Azrael started fighting. Because Bryce then needed to go back and to her world. And they were like, nah, sis, like you've done too much, we can't let you leave, and she's like, listen, my boyfriend is stuck, and I gotta go save him, so, I'm gonna leave, and it just became a whole battle, so as they're battling, to collapse, they find this lady, this lady wakes up not knowing what's going on, and she's like, ah, have you come to free me, so I can continue my rule, and Bryce is like, I don't know who you are, but we're definitely not freeing you, because you don't give off good vibes and the lady's like she doesn't know what year it's been she doesn't know how long she's been down there and so her and Bryce get to a little battle Bryce kills her so that's a little fun that's a little bit that's a little fun bit um so Bryce just killed, killed in the stary. so then Bryce steal so the other thing is like uh Azrael has the dagger so I think in the pre one of the previous two books there was that like prophecy or whatever that said like Oh, if you bring the dagger and the sword together, you'll unite your people or whatever. Excuse me. So, Bryce steals the dagger from Azrael because it turns out he has it. And then goes back to her world and leaves them scrambling with this message she left in their world. Which, sis, you kind of ruined that for them. Um, and so, yeah. So, that's like the good chunk of the first half of the book is just like that whole revelation and I think Sarah Jemos actually did a good job I wish like I feel like this stuff could have happened in the second book if that makes sense like the third book could have been shorter maybe I don't know or you know what like she still had enough stuff in the third book that this revelation part could have been in the second book because I feel like the second book wouldn't have wasted all of our times if she had included this stuff so yeah so then um this is now like I gotta go save everybody from the dungeons because they're biting people's hands off down there and they're still struggling and though I they, they have the hind trying to help them she still can't like give up her position even though she's like madly in love with Rune now so um they stuck so the Scooby gang manages to get in contact with the hind and then you got merman they're on he's doing his own thing and then you got Ethan who's also doing his own thing so everybody's like all over the place and Bryce coming back kind of starts to like maybe unite them the biggest complaint that I had so like as reading was that Ethan was still hung up on this random girl so at the end of the second book he found this girl and he was like oh she's like the next heir to the to the wolf pack or whatever and good for her and everything but sir like why does she matter you know what I mean like I get he was trying to look for a solution to like get Sabine out of like the way which is great but like he was like obsessed so he stole her from where she was and now he has this like weak weak link because she doesn't she doesn't know what she's doing so that was like the annoying part because he was so obsessed with this girl and he wouldn't let it go and we're like bruh like there are so many important things going on you need to let that girl go essentially and so that was like very annoying because it felt like he was like hyper fixating so the Scooby Gang realizes where Ther Theron is. They gotta go save him from the, the Viper Queen. And the problem is that he signed a contract to get away from that ocean, the River Queen or whatever, um, in the second book. So he's like, 
one, stuck in this contract with a Viper Queen, but also he's like drugged, like he's hooked on her venom. So he's now a druggie too. So, um, when everybody finds him, he's like giving up on life. He's like, I don't care anymore, I'm just gonna die here, like I'm gonna live my best life in my drug, in my drug induced state. Ethan is like, no, I'm gonna save my friend. And makes a deal with this lady, he's like, if I fight in one fight for you, like, you gotta free Theron. And she was like, bet. Which everybody was like, bro, like, did you, like, stipulate? Like, there was, you didn't include any type of stipulation. He was like, I'll just fight in the fight. You just gotta let him go. Like, you didn't, this lady's making contracts. It's a business to make contracts. And you didn't think to add any type of stipulation, like, requirements. Didn't think she was gonna try and trick you at any point. You just believed she was gonna let you just go. Okay. So, he, um... Doesn't realize, but when he gets to the fight, he he has to fight the girl he saved, the next heir to the wolves. So now he's panicking because he's like, I can't really injure this girl because she's my only hope to save the wolves. But at the same time, I need to live because like I don't want to die. And then he accidentally kills the girl. So now I'm like, Sarah Jamas, why'd you bring this girl in here just to kill her off? Like you should just let her be, and you should just had Ethan take over. Um, so now he's like but hurt and then he goes and he resurrects her he tries to he makes her a reaper and then loses her and i'm like sir your obsession with this girl just cost you all this like this is your fault you should have just let her go you should have just like moved on like you should have just let her stay dead because like there is no point in you doing all this I don't know what I'm doing. If you're judging me right now with this makeup, please don't. I'm just, I'm just doing my, my best, okay? But yeah, so he, he has made a mess of things now. So now they have this Reaper on the loose. They don't know where she is. And she hates him because she's like, you killed me. And he's like, it was an accident. And she's like, you still killed me. So, again, he's, I felt like throughout this whole book, he was just creating more problems than was needed. Because... Who told you to care about this girl? Who told you to bring her back? Who told you to rescue her in the first place? Sir, like, we're about to be in war, and you're worried about the wrong things. So, that's the dilemma with that. Theron was another thing, because I was like, Mans, what are you doing? Like, you're wasting everybody's time. If you don't want to be part of the group, just say you don't want to be part of the group. Move on. But, like, you're doing too much. Yes. So that's, like, another part. So then the Scooby gang, they were just chilling. The other main plot was, like, Rune and the Hind, which was interesting. I didn't mind it. I didn't care about it as much, but I didn't mind it. Um, though sometimes I was like, y'all, we, we're in a little literal war. I need you to get over your issues. Please and thank you. Because while he was in the dungeons, he was, Sis was trying to, like, tell it, like, telepathically tell him the plan. Like, I'm gonna get you out. You just gotta wait it out. And he was annoying the crap out of her. And she's like, I'm trying to tell you the plan, and you're ignoring me. While we're in dire straits. And I'm like, sir, you need to prioritize your feelings. Okay, I get you hate her, you're mad, you feel like she betrayed you, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. But if Sis is trying to get you out, you need to, like, listen. Priority is getting out of this damn dungeon. And then you can hate her. So he was annoying me with that in the beginning because he wasn't prioritizing getting out. Like everybody else is trying to get out, come up with a plan, do something. And you're sitting there blocking out the only solution you had. Bryce comes back and her dad basically kidnaps her. So she like, I think she lands in a portal in his office or something or... I forgot how, where she landed when she came back, but when she wakes up, she's at her dad's house, and he's, like, refusing to let her leave, essentially. And everybody's like, mans, why did you just kidnap this girl? She's like, you kidnapped me, can you let me go? And he's like, no. Because, uh, I think it was partially because he knew what she was, excuse me, he knew what she was doing. And he knew where she went, and so he wanted her to give the information, and she didn't want to give it to him because she knew that he would use it in a bad way, and it just wouldn't benefit anybody if he had the information that she learned. So, um, 
he like was like I'm not gonna let you leave until you like share with me what you what you were doing and so she's just like whatever like I'm over I'm just gonna chill here for a second and regroup so as she's doing that she comes up with her own plan she manages to escape blah 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 so they um as she escapes the hind breaks out hunt rune and the hellhounds I forgot his name and um the Scooby Scooby gang helps and they all manage to escape to her uncle's island where they feel like the next that's where like the next piece of the puzzle probably is and so she gets there her uncle's like definitely gonna turn them in or whatever but he's just like waiting his time because he knows she has valuable information and so they have to search his library and then they have to go into the tunnels that's on that island because they realize the island is similar to the island that she found herself in in the Akatar world so she gets there and they realize that the uncle has betrayed them and he snitched to her father so at some point her father ends up arriving and then um Maroon kills him so the father dies. So throughout this, like, when we were reading this book, when I was reading this book, well, Money too, I guess, we were both theorizing that she was going to kill some people because we were like, there's too many characters. There's too many people to remember. Um, so she's going to have to kill off some people probably by the end of this book. Because honestly, that's kind of... I feel like reading Throne of Glass, she killed off maybe a good chunk of people before we got to the set like the actual cast of the series and I feel like with this series she didn't really do that as much I mean like yeah that one group was wiped out in the first book um but I feel like she's killed off a lot more but I, I could be wrong um so Ruben kills his father as like kind of like a defense of his sister but also in revenge because his father was an abusive jerk and it was like Bryce knew that it was basically Rude's kill and she wasn't gonna like take that from him and then they find out that like there was more to the story with the Asteri I think I forgot oh no and then the island so all the magic that was on the island that was being stored there um was given to Bryce so now she is the true like ruler of the island if that makes sense and so, uh, oh, and then they killed her uncle, the uncle too, I think. Yeah. So, both the Fey Kings are dead, and now Bryce is the true Fey Queen. So, what an upgrade. So this is where they start trying to plot to, uh, kill the Asteri. And to be honest, I wasn't sure, so like by that point, where they're on the island, the dad is dead. We're like almost done with the book. So I wasn't sure how much, like, if we were gonna get to the point of them finding the Asteri or if like she was prolonging this into another book. Because also, this was the point that I found out that there was gonna be a fourth book. So she like did an interview and it was released where she was saying that there was gonna be a Crescent City 4, but the issue is that, well, it's not an issue, but the thing is, it's not coming until like later so she has two books lined up already so the next Akatar book and then another book that she hasn't mentioned or talked about at all so we don't know what this book is going to be about we don't know what world is going to be it could e it could either go I think my theory is that it's either going to go into the throne of glass world it's going to be a continuation because Crescent City does talk a lot about and mention throne of glass often um especially when we learn about the the origins of the shapeshifters um like Ethan and so I think that uh it could either be that or it's a completely another book in a new world and the worlds could potentially be hell or just another world in general so I think those are our options with this next book because she didn't say anything about it except for the fact that she's been thinking about it for a while and she's really excited for it. So then after those two books is going to be the next Crescent City book. I was like she's going to either prolong this further into a fourth book or it's going to be a really like fast fight essentially. 
So we get to um, the part where they like plan, they planned everything out, they all fight and everything like that, and essentially they win. And the crazy, oh, and they get hell, I'm so sorry. They, they got hell into the world. So the two two or three princes of hell come in. They also learn Hunt's origins, which is still kind of confusing to me, so I'm not gonna, even going to try to explain it. But um, the three princes come in, they help out, and they do make an ominous like like comment where they're like, she's like, oh, where are the rest of your brothers? And they're like, oh, um, they're all helping other worlds. So I think that's where like this new book is maybe going to come in, or it's just a future setup for like, oh, there's like a whole another set of worlds out there that the Asteria are taking over. And I kind of think, and Monet gave me this theory that like the Asteria are kind of like parasites almost, where they like have a home somewhere. I think they said it was like overpopulated or something. So some of them are like sent out to find new worlds to take over. And so they're kind of like squads almost. Like they're not all encompassing, if that makes sense. Or there's like not just one set. Um, so, I found it intriguing that the other princes were helping the other worlds, and again, the only other time so far that I've seen Hell is referenced in Throne of Glass, and it, it's slightly different, so I'm intrigued to see what that means, especially because if you've read Throne of Glass and you read the last book, she does get a glimpse of Midgard, and she does get a glimpse of Akatar. so, I don't know, I don't know what that means fully, but... I think it's gonna matter maybe later um so they win and the thing is they win and so now I'm like okay so then why is there gonna be a fourth book because in my eyes everything's kind of finished like there's like a few loose ends like Ethan ends up beating Sabine and he ends up becoming the new wolf leader the pack leader or whatever and then the only other like loose end is that like halfway through the book Theron marries Flynn's sister is that his name is Flynn right one of the Scooby gang one of the guys in the Scooby gang one of Rune's friends he ends up marrying her his sister so that she could she wouldn't be married off by uh Bryce's uncle so I'm like and then at the end she disappears so that's like kind of a loose end, but like not really. Like by the time they finish the series, they are trying to rebuild. Like they're trying to rebuild their republic into something more like just and fair for the humans and the other um, lower beings. So that way, um, everything is fair for everybody. So I don't know what sis could write about next unless these next two books include something that's going to include Midgard later. So those are my thoughts. Hopefully this was interesting. If you watched, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. You guys are awesome. Lovers and wolves.